Okay, well, here we are. Uh, I'm going to do a little rundown on this uh, project that I've been working for in my office. It's essentially, I guess it's maybe closest to a credenza or a um, sideboard, a 28-inch high table with to have five drawers at the top and then th the three segments in the bottom. We're looking at the bottom. The, the legs there are will be a bookshelf. 12-inch uh, shelf on the ends and then a 16-inch tall for large volumes in the middle, which I don't have space for in my regular um, uh, office. The wood here is mostly the, the frame and the legs are butternut uh, from a tree that I harvested off the back of the property here not too long ago. Uh, maybe three years ago now, uh, sawed it all into five quarter mostly, and some sixteen quarter from a sh from a from a short uh, chunk out of the butt log, four foot piece, which I then re sawed into these inch and three quarter solid but butternut legs. Okay, the panels on the side are actually teak plywood from a salvage from the Hinkley boatyard on the scrap pile. Let's see, we have the joinery here is, um, the face frames here are all connected by sliding dovetails, you can see here, um, made with a two-part uh, router jig. I use this jig right here uh, with a half inch, um, guide uh, in my uh, tr uh, trim router. So the it slides in here. And then you can see I, I use it for two things. I use it just to make dados, which, and I, which I've done in the legs here. And I also use it, I just reposition the top and line it up with this dovetailed slot and use it to make sliding dovetails. So it works great as long as you get this slot very tight. Um, you just put, clamp the workpiece uh, in there Plunge, put your router in there, plunge it, and then slide it back. You, this uh, front piece uh, uh, stops tear out, so make sure you do that. You're going to have tear out from these dovetail joints. So that's that. Let's see, there's 10 of those sliding dovetails here, um, if you count them. The, uh, we also have traditional mortise and tenon um, in the side panels and the rear, which is a full rear paneled uh, back which I cut on the uh, Shopsmith uh, horizontal uh, morticing tool, uh, the slot morticer, which, uh, show, which I'll show in a separate video. Um, let's see, there's, uh, what, 22 of those mortise and tenons. The tenons I just cut on the table saw the cheeks and route away the waist with a flat bit, so I get a nice flat tenon. Um, there is a couple of dados in the rear here. If you look uh, at the... Uh, web frames, it's dadded in the rear. The bottom shelf, the bookshelf, is actually three-quarter inch wide ash, two boards I glued together. That's glued to the front in a slight rabbit in the front frame panel here. And then in the back, it's dadoed into the back bottom rail. Not glued there, so this thing can move uh, front and back. It's finished on both sides, of course, and we'll be able to move uh, fast and just in the front, the back movement will should be invisible. The web frames here, let's see, there's 16 pieces of the web frames. This is, there's a lot of moving parts in this uh, seemingly small uh, construction. Those are all made out of uh, th three quarter inch hard maple. Just uh, the, the, these, these ones here are recessed because they, they're gonna be two drawers here. Um, where the fronts will be uh, essentially flush with each other, there'll be no horizontal uh, rail panel as they will be here. So we'll have two drawers here, one here, and then two more over here, butting on this uh, maple, which will be invisible to the for the viewer in the front. Those will be all. I haven't made them yet. Those will be hand cut dove, uh, you know, uh, half blind dovetails in bird's eye maple fronts. Uh, the top is also going to be bird's eye maple. Let's go over here and look at this in the shop. It's got one, it's got a coat of finish on both sides now. Just started this. It's beautiful, 
wood one just obviously my favorite if you follow anything i do um this will get several more coats before i'll actually attach it so it's easier to do and again finished well thoroughly on both sides so it stays nice and flat okay enough for now a little bit more about the joinery of this piece you see you have these top horizontal rails coming into the legs that's a problematic joint because if you you need a lot of side grain material and if you run your tenon vertically so you get a side grain joint it's just not going to be very strong or very large so the best way to do this i don't know if you can see this is with a dovetail uh essentially it's essentially like a half line dovetail because you're you're cutting into the the, the tail is cut on first on the rail piece and then you have to uh, what I do is mark this with blue tape route with the with the with the little trim router right up near about a what maybe a quarter inch down in no more than that you're nibbling in against the blue tape outline of this uh, tail and then once you get most of the waste away you take a long like one inch chisel and you very carefully chop to the line all the way around so you get a actual a perfectly custom fit that only has to be shallow and then you then you drop your router down another quarter half of an inch use that and a top bearing bit as the guide and route around route the waist down to whatever so this is a three quarter inch piece it's actually cut away in the back because i didn't want to the data to show in the and the in the frame so that's only the it's an actual dovetail is only five eighths there's a quarter inch or one eighth relief in the back so those came out nice and solid and that that not only has good side grain it also of course resists any kind of uh rat uh movement uh end to end perfectly that cannot move okay okay here's the finished product um moved into my upstairs office um, you can see that the, there are five drawers here now, all finished off um, with uh, half blind dovetails in the front, full um, through dovetails in the rear joints. I end up putting these uh, little card file tab poles on, like nice brass with little screws. Um, those bottom spaces will be uh, bookshelves. Again, the construction here is. Uh, through dovetails in, in all the uh, the frame members. There's a white ash bookshelf in the bottom, two boards. And the top is uh, what, three? Actually, yes, three boards of uh, bird's eye maple glued up. Uh, beautiful stuff. I mean, you never know how nice this stuff is until you actually finish it. The one piece especially is almost quilted. It just really looks nice. Um, the sides, of course, are more butternut. The legs butternut. The frame panels are butternut. And these uh, plywood panels are actually teak, salvaged from the Hinkley Boatyard. So the idea is that I actually use these for papers. They should fit um, standard uh, file or standard paper sizes, right? There we go. There's our income tax, our Schedule T for a recent timber sale. So. That's the idea to keep some of this clutter off of my other, my nice bird's eye desk that I made last year, um, which is of course incredibly functional and very nice, but tends to collect because I do do a lot of work up here. So um, this is the idea to maybe uh, add, uh, I do have a, some clutter over here in my bookshelf as well that needs to be organized. So that, this should hold all of that and help organize things up here in this Wonderful workspace, actually. So, okay, we're going to close the wrap.